Hello and welcome. This is On the Barricades, your favorite political show on the internet, produced by Eastern European leftists. Uh, we're activists, we're journalists, we're academics, it takes all kinds of. And we're here today to discuss... Uh, Ukraine. We're here to discuss the international tensions which focus around Ukraine. Uh, and we brought uh, a special, very special guest for you, Andrei Buzarov, who is uh, a political scientist, political analyst who specializes in conflict resolution. He's also an academic and he is on the ground in Kiev. Moreover, he is from the region of Donetsk, from uh, eastern Ukraine, so he can also share some personal experience, not only his expert knowledge. And of course, I'm Boyan Stanislavski. With me is Maria Cherna, the co-host of the show. Hello, Maria. Hello. And once again, Andrei, hello to you. Please uh, go ahead, Maria, and uh, let's let's talk about about uh, you know the kind of non-political. Well, it's not non-political, but the kind of meta-political aspect uh, of the um, of the situation. Well, the thing that bothers me when I read political uh, analysts discuss the situation in Ukraine, it's all very abstract and it kind of scares me because we are talking uh, here about people, their lives and the serious effects that such events might uh, have on their daily lives and their um, prospects for uh, progress and uh, stability and all the rest and uh, this is why i always focus on the specific and the practical things related to this conflict and the first thing that i want to ask is related to the situation in the breakaway republics and the idea that those people were moved where where exactly and why do i ask this question i discussed this also on our previous show um People don't understand that especially the civilian population has the biggest price to pay because we discuss, oh, they were evacuated. Where exactly? And just think for a moment, I ask the viewers to think, what does it mean for you to be evacuated? Because they are not going to take you somewhere and accommodate you in a five stars hotel. So how many people and where were they taken? Do you know? Uh, first of all, uh, you mentioned very serious, very serious, very complicated uh, th thing and complicated problem and uh, phenomenon about the, uh, the conflict in the east of Ukraine, the problem of humanism and humanity generally. Because I think <clears throat> that seven years ago with this terrible situation happened in our country in Ukraine, in the east Ukraine, uh, I, I, I think that uh, seven years later, our politicians and our government did not understand uh, the real uh, situation and the real scale. I think that they did not take necessary lessons from s that uh, terrible situation. <clears throat> uh, first of all, I want to say about Ukraine and next about the, the current situation with evacuation of the people. <clears throat> because last uh, yesterday I phoned with my relatives in Donetsk and they ex explained what is happening about the so-called evacuation. Uh, in Ukraine, when we, when we see now, uh, and during last year's uh, government, on the one hand, create the infrastructure for the refugees or how we call them internally displaced persons, internally displaced persons, They're actually migrants. I have an official document that I'm an internally displaced person. But on the one hand, the infrastructure was made with the helping of our Western allies and European Union, but because of the corruption, because of the, uh, because of the prejudice that all people from Donbass, they are Russian, and because of the uh, some other things, <clears throat> there wasn't any real reintegration of the popularity people inside Ukrainian society. So uh, Ukrainian politicians, the Ukrainian government lost uh, the fight for the minds of the people in the west of Ukraine because this is uh, dominating of the idea that millions of people and at least in the Donbas, it, the population was six or seven million people. Uh, before the starting of the war in 2014. So uh, the, 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 the Ukrainian politicians and gov government, mostly with the radical and uh, right wing, I would say, um, um, uh, position, they did not reintegrate a lot of people, uh, despite their prejudice that people are very pro-Russian. So this is the biggest mistake which is made by Ukrainian politicians. And when we have now this kind of escalation, Unfortunately, because of the uh, closing the checkpoints and the front line, the people from Donbass, they're not uh, going here in Ukraine, they're going in Russia. 
-hmm. that uh, in according with the UN uh, calculation, uh, there are a lot of one and the five million people who live in the occupied territory, and they they are have all have Ukrainian citizenship. Yes, there are some people who took Russian uh, citizenship, but not all. They are all pro-Ukrainians. Maybe they are not pro-nationalist. I mean, they against the government, but not against the state. Mm -hmm. But the same politicians in Ukraine, which doesn't want and did not want the peace, the peace, peace, uh, peace, peace um, kind of solution of the of the conflict. They always keep on repeating that these people they are pro-Russians, that they are separatists. They they are not need. That's why now the checkpoints they closed. I want to justify they closed by both sides, by the separatists and by the Ukrainians. However, the people begin to go to Russia mostly from the occupied territory, occupied territory, because here in Ukraine, in the not occupied part of Donbas, we don't have panic. As Boyan said, we have immunity, immunity towards any kind of threat. Russians and uh, separatists, the people who live even my, like my cousin brother with his uh, family he live in the occupied territory in Slovyansk. this is a city very 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 near the front line this is not mm -hmm. this is not occupied part of Donbass but he phoned me two hours ago and said Andrei we don't have panic we we live actually eight years uh, during the war time we don't have panic mm -hmm. but the people who are uh, live in the no, in, in in occupied territory of Donbass they uh, also did not have panic I communicated with many my relatives, my my uncle who lives in Donetsk. The panic is only near the front line, or uh, sorry, near the borderline with Russia. Mm -hmm. So there is a borderline uh, with Russia, which is not controlled by Ukraine, but controlled by separatists. And a lot of people began to go. Why? Because they saw the the the, the military infrastructure, the military uh, possibilities of Russians, and mm -hmm. and uh, the 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 the, the the, the the threat of um, uh, of um, a perception by the people who lived in the occupied territory they think that the Ukrainian army will start the military in, in, in intervention this is a, the most complicated understanding I would say the problem this is the key to understanding that in occupied part of Donbass they are waiting for the Ukrainian military intervention and in Ukraine we are waiting for the Russian military intervention. This uh, is the yes, biggest contradiction. And that's why the people which you saw a long queues of the cars who are going out of Donetsk towards Russia, they think that the Ukrainian army will start the military yeah. intervention. That's why uh, that's why we cannot understand. So Russians say we will not go, our government say we will not go, but uh, Western allies say the war will be. Mm -hmm. How can you explain it? Yeah, okay. So just to recap, just to make sure that, you know, we understand it all correctly and we're on the same page here. You're telling us that there is this uh, uh, thing that is misunderstood or that has been misunderstood by the um, Ukrainian government and by many people all around the world, actually, who, you know, uh, fall for this, whatever, narratives, okay, of the corporate media uh, around the world, that those people who are, who live in those uh, self-proclaimed republics, that they are all pro-Russian, that they are basically Russian oh. to the core and, you know, they hate Ukraine. They hate the Ukrainian language and stuff like this. is This is BS. This is all just not true. And that they are they 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 of course don't necessarily support the nationalists or the kind of you know uh, extreme right wing elements who want to devoid them or strip them of you know their right to use the Russian language and to be to have this mixed identity Russian Ukrainian whatever they uh, uh, however they identify they don't support that of course because this is against their sense of place in Ukraine. Mm, but they are not. But they are not necessarily against you know uh, the, the existence existence or the no, Ukrainian statehood no. and stuff like that so so and then the, the Ukrainian government except, has actually boyan, 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 boyan. except some thousand of the people yeah. Ukraine who are integrated in the in the dinner infrastructure who mm -hmm. actually they controlled by Russians yes yeah. they're against any kind of Ukraine but I can tell you that it's less than 10 percent of the population of the 
less than 10%. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's not a, a real statistic that you are right when you explain yeah. the situation. Okay, so 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 this is like the, the, the Ukrainian government has made this huge mistake and shot themselves basically in the knee by by you know rejecting their uh, their their perception of of uh, Ukrainianness of being part of the Ukrainian project in whatever sense just different from the one that the nationalists put forward. So that that was one thing and this was of course for the benefit of Russia who was able to you know wave the the, yeah. the banner of like you yeah. know we do the great yeah. thing the refugees yeah, are coming yeah. we're the yeah yeah exactly okay and and that's uh, so that's one thing and the second thing is that th this tension has produced if i understood correctly this tension has produced an absurd situation where on the contact line on the ukrainian side you have uh you know people being afraid of uh, or afraid or, or somehow considering you know a russian invasion <laughs> you know uh and and then close to the con uh, close to the border between the self-proclaimed republics and russia people are being afraid of ukrainian massive attack on yeah, those two republics true. which true. is like yeah so everybody live in some kind of panic except for those people who chaos, really know chaos, chaos, chaos yeah chaos yeah chaos. exactly that, that that's much more accurate what you're saying so they live in this chaos they don't know where to go and you know when these bombastic things occur in the public sphere where you know uh, evacuation and stuff then some people just take action because they're they're not sure what to do and how to react and they don't know whether this war is actually happening or yeah, not and, and, and when biden yesterday said that kiev will be on the attack yeah you can imagine what people now begin to think in kiev so what yeah. to do if the president of the united states say that uh, presumably kiev will be under attack mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so what to do to the the people who live in kiev and this is also another step towards the destabilization and the kind of yeah but, but but you know i want you to please speak to that because uh you know you said in the previous segment of our program that the politicians in ukraine they kind of like this like you know to the extent that it's likable the situation because they can use it for political purposes in uh, you know domestic political purposes you know they can have this propaganda and and sort of uh the emotional disbalance of society is very important for for them scoring political points or electoral points and so on and and you know i get this but come on like even the the the, the, the most stupid politician has to be able to understand that this cannot last forever and you said yeah. it yourself well like probably the push is coming to the shove it's either our way you know yeah. like you know this way or the highway i mean yeah, yeah we yeah. don't have a lot of time yeah exactly well, we don't have a lot of time and only intelligent people i mean the highly educated people and i think the ordinary ukrainians understand that we don't have a lot of time mm -hmm. and uh, uh you uh, mentioned and uh, maria also important thing concerning the this is some kind of um misunderstanding mm -hmm. uh the different perception but uh the, the biggest problem now in in the 19th of february 2022 for ukrainians and that what will be next mm -hmm. so if we speak about the like boy say that we don't have a lot of time uh, we, we have to do something but Inside our society, our public opinion is very split, mm -hmm. absolutely split, terribly split. I think inevitably split about what to do. But there is two groups: politicians, experts, uh, ordinary people. One say that we should be ready, and we are actually ready uh, against the uh, Russians and the possible resistance. But readiness it doesn't mean the resolveness of the conflict. So mm -hmm. this. Part of the people say that we have to take more, more, uh, action. more actions. We have to be very radical toward Russians. We should take much more, uh, much more uh, military equipment from uh, allies. We should be militarize the society mm -hmm. against Russia. The another part say, yes, we should be ready, but we to, to find the, uh, the, the 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 consensus, some kind of uh, agreement. Or modus vivendi, like we mm -hmm. said, lawyers. So, so the, the principle of coexistence, first of all, with the occupied part. So it this situation, you don't feel inside, but I feel inside what is happening. This situation can provoke a blast in Ukrainian society. Blast. Like it was, for example, in other countries, you know, in ex-Yugoslavia, in yeah. the Middle East. At now we are on the eve of such kind of situation. So mainly depends on the, our president and his uh, government. How can? But I understand he, anything could happen. Like, anything. Now, yes. I mean, yeah. the nearest three months, because mm -hmm. Russians will not take out the military uh, equipment from the body, and, and the United States will not come back the stuff in this month or next month. I think they evacuated for several months at least. 
Uh, so th this, this uh, problem in our society can cause any kind of situation and depends on the president, how he will now balance between London, between uh, Ankara, or Moscow and Washington, his team, or will not succeed. That's why we can see different variants of the situation. This is the most problematic thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and I would uh, say that 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 uh, I come back to the idea, and um, as I uh, discussed earlier, and I'm glad to see that my intuition is correct. A lot is now on Zelensky's shoulders, but but I would say he's not acting accordingly to some established scenario. I mean, he started to develop some spine. He he grew some spine actually, and he showed why I was quite surprised. Or maybe sense of reality, not so much. Or maybe spine. a sense of reality, and uh, I'm saying that he grew some spine in a way that he became proactive, not just uh, acting according to a to a, to an already established plan, but having his voice heard. And this is very interesting, I would say. This is a development that I uh, I did not expect. Even though I knew that he came from the media and he was, he's very, uh, I would say uh, that he is a player and he knows how to use this. But is this enough? Do you think he has it in him to... to keep is he clever him? enough? Well, he's clever <laughs> enough to... Uh, he's clever. He's clever. He's a very talented man, but uh, I think he's not understand the real situation in our country when he began the president in 2019 in his team. Maria, you um, took um, attention on the moral thing. Uh, it's a very complicated uh, thing for our politicians because actually we don't have a new generation of politicians and um, the problem now that um, what we see between Russia and uh, Ukraine, this is how Boyan said, the negotiations in France and Berlin. This is, I, I called it forced diplomacy, not logic diplomacy. Mm -hmm. What I say, if the Russian tension would not be, this the diplomacy will not appear, will not have appeared. You understand? So the, the diplomacy, the, the stage of diplomatic or negotiation uh, <laughs> things, they should be logical and they should be effective. But they are unfortunately now our government begin to do and our president be began to do something only because of such kind of threat. Mm -hmm. So when he had opportunity to find the solution with the Russians in 2019, when he began the president, he made the first step. They met in Paris in, in December 2019 and he signed the agreement of implementation of Minsk agreement. But then, then two months wait, two months later, they were frozen because of the some reasons i want to not to discuss there, 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 we, we, a lot of reasons why but they were frozen for two years russians were awaiting 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 sanctions against them working working, working. Up, yeah. geopolitical situation changed you know how in, in not good extent i mean not good extent. the russians finally in april of last year they began to act began to act with a military treatment with a military and the two action. declarations or yeah. the tre treaties the tr draft so, treaties yeah so our government as well as, uh, as other governments in the world they understand that it's not joke and uh, our government begin to find the keys how to negotiate it with russians and with united states and the united states and britain they also understand what is going on they understand that, that our government is a very bad situation so they waiting they, they 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 have their own interest that's why i think the, the problem that the, the the team of zelensky his 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 advisors they did not realize the seriousness of the geopolitical situation that's why now they are ready maybe for communication with russia but i don't think that russian russians are now ready for you know, this is this is a great this is a great segue. What you just said uh, to uh, the uh, to the next theme that I want to take up now in the program, which is uh, what is the solution? I mean, we really have to. Uh, perhaps there's no solution, or don't, no good solution, or no 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 perfect solution. But there's got to be some way forward for the Ukrainian people and for the Ukrainian uh, nation, for the Ukrainian state. Because I mean, there are many speculations. You know, even even in Western media, that this might be pretty much the end of the modern. You know. 
the Ukrainian statehood as we know it, okay, or as we've known it uh, since 1991. So this is uh, this is something that I want to talk uh, talk to you about. Like, uh, look, okay, negotiations, fine. But the, the Russians seem to have made their position, at least that's how I read it. If you feel that I'm wrong, please push back. But this is how I read the situation. The Russians are saying this. Look, this is an intra-Ukrainian conflict, okay? We care about the people there because they have this Russian, uh, mixed Russian, uh, uh, Ukrainian identity. Some of them ident- probably identify even as like Russian or pro-Russian, whether it's 10% or 15%. I don't want to go into the math of it. I just want to indicate that, you know, for uh, uh, for the sake of the clarity of the situation. And, and uh, you know, some of those people already received uh, uh, Russian citizenship. Many of them received pensions from Russian, uh, you know, secure, social security funds and so on and so forth. So if Ukraine is going to try to take by, by force, be it Crimea or be it the, you know, Lugansk and Donetsk republics, we're going to react with the full force that we have in our disposal for situations like that. And they made it clear. That's, that, that's one thing. Second thing that they've made clear is that, hey, guys, if you want to talk, begin with the Minsk Accords, because this is what we all agreed to and it's you know like here i gotta say that i they were right in this i mean they did agree on this and i of course i understand that this was under the pressure of the of the russian military uh, uh, sort of escalation in 2015 i i realized that but still i mean we had france germany uh, and and ukraine and russia agree Okay, on those Minsk Accords. Plus, it was also it received the sanction of the Security Council of the United Nations, which made it pretty much the source of international law. And you know, and now Ukraine has not actually you know made any attempt to speak to those to the leadership of this republic. And whether it's controlled by Russia or not, like I don't want to even speculate about it. The question is that they agreed to this and they did not adhere to that. And now, you know, I wonder after mm, after this uh, bill uh, by the Duma was submitted to Putin to actually recognize those two uh, breakaway republics. Um, I wonder, do you think that the Russians are still interested in those Minsk Accords? Um, I will try to explain all mm. the scenarios very briefly. Okay. Actually, <laughs> we don't have a lot of choice, where mm. Maria. <laughs> it's not difficult to understand what are the scenarios, but I will systemize the, the facts, how mm-hmm. I see it, in accordance with what uh, Boyan and you said in the, during the last uh, 35 minutes. First, uh, the most uh, non-probable scenario, this is a direct foreign invasion of Russia. I don't believe it in such mm-hmm. a scenario because if they want to do it, they have already can do it many times. In 2014, mm-hmm. they have a lot of military infrastructure in Crimea, in Belarus, in Russia. So they actually control all the military uh, situation in the region, not only in Ukraine. That's why I think they can do it uh, in any time. But now uh, I don't see uh, the, the signs of the direct uh, uh, military invasion. If it will be, like Americans say, it will be another country, another situation, another world. So I cannot understand what will be after the uh, an American or after the Russian invasion. The second scenario, probable, but I think it's not so probable like uh, in other scenarios. Mm-hmm. The second scenario, this is the scenario with the recognition of the uh, so-called uh, republics, like it was with South City and Abkhazia. Uh, I, I, it, it, I suggest that such kind of scenario can be, but only after the conflict, after the possible serious escalation of the conflict. Now we see the tension between two parts, and I think that it can provoke to some kind of serious military escalation, but in regional level, not in the national level. It can be some kind of provocation by the third party also, or by the Russians, or by the separatists, or by the nationalists, I don't know, but it can provoke some kind of escalation. Mm-hmm. After this, I, I will sure Russians will, uh, will recognize the so-called Republic, this is not controlled area actually, and uh, they will use it to take out, to take, to hand over the responsibility for the infringement of the Minsk agreement to Ukraine. Mm-hmm. Ukrainians uh, and our government is not not interested now in such kind of scenario because they, we have the negotiations with Russians, so we have to uh, wait the, the 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 ending of such kind of negotiations and how long they will last. I don't know. It depends mm-hmm. on the, our president and Putin. Actually, two parts. The third variant, the variant when um, it can be some kind of consensus, very quick consensus with Russians, mm-hmm. uh, when our president find 
uh, some kind of consensus with Russia now during this negotiation, and they will stabilize the situation. But I also did not believe in such kind of scenario because it can provoke and it will provoke a very serious manifestations in the west of the country and in Kiev. Mm. The situation will be dangerous, as I said, it will be blocked. So no way forward, no way, almost no there way. There is forward. only one last variant for the first variant, which is probable, in my opinion. This is the some kind of not public agreement with Russians, it can be provoked, but Russians realizing what happened last eight years, despite who was the president in our country and who will be the president mm -hmm. of our country, they will keep on use economical, political and media tension or pressure on our country. Mm -hmm. It will cause, why they will do it? It will cause the split it uh, situation in the allies, Ukrainian allies, mm -hmm. which the Ukrainian allies, this is not new Ukrainian allies. It, it, it's ex-Soviet, ex-Russian actually, and ex, I don't know, hybrid allies. Mm -hmm. So the situation will begin to swinging, swinging, spying, you know, spying. Mm -hmm. And you will see how the West and the East will benefit this such kind of situation. And I think the for, for Zelensky, for our president, need only short consensus now with Russia mm -hmm. because he has two years before the presidential campaign the president so he need only two years period to find out his uh find out for his uh, this first period of presidency and to stabilize the country that's why I think that the president can find the solution with Russians not publicly but it doesn't mean the uh, whole gen whole general uh, resolvement of the problems with Russians. So Russians, they will control the situation during the two years period and they will decide what method to use, military or politically mm -hmm. or economically, because they have a lot of variants how to influence our uh, society. They blocked their trade in the Azov and the um, Black Sea. They can block the electricity supply. They can block a lot of energy supplies. Mm -hmm. So they have a lot of things how to pressure to use uh, to provoke the uh, political tension. That's why I think the uh, military variant possible, and I think it's quite possible in several years, if the situation geopolitically uh, deteriorated, it's possible, but not now. Now mm -hmm. we have the military phase, unfortunately very radical, but military phase. But of, posturing, uh, more posturing yeah, rather yeah, than... Yeah. 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 Uh, I, that's why I think it's much, much, much more probable scenario. That's why Americans, they realize that in this year, the country will not be like it was, Ukraine. That's mm -hmm. why they are preparing for some kind of other political instability, but not mm -hmm. uh, a military invasion. Uh, that's mm -hmm. why we, we will see what will, what will be. Okay, so, so you're saying you're saying basically that the way forward right now in this complicated, cascading, you know, uh, uh, problematic situation is that, well, there could be some consensus on minimum minimum things between you know and and, and the consensus could be struck and also really behind, secret because as long as yeah, it behind is public. Doors. publicly that, probably. yeah 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 so that, that they would strike some kind of deal on minor minimum issues so that you know the conflict does not deteriorate into an open uh, all out war but probably the situation is going to keep being as it is i mean tense dangerous with occasional shelling with occasional yeah, yeah. you know uh, uh, tensions mm -hmm. rising with the info war full spectrum like, you know, on both sides and stuff like that. And, and of course, I mean, you know, uh, even if this, this solution is implemented, I mean, this kind of, you know, behind closed doors, uh, minimum agreements and stuff like that, the Ukrainian people and the people in Donbass, they're just going to keep suffering. I mean, the, the situation isn't going to be any better for them. Uh, this, this is one problem. And another problem, the, the, the absence of the, the absence of the, understanding what will be in in ukrainians in all the country yeah yeah so anxiety like throughout the nation yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, all the all the parties they will yeah. they will bring the 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 wood in the fire you know? mm -hmm. yeah yeah which is just yeah. wrecking the nation really yeah because the people as you said in the uh, in the front line or near the front line they unfortunately accustomed the psych psychological mm -hmm. psychological condition accustomed to the war. This is another uh, type of the um, uh, social behavior. Mm -hmm. But in the other regions of Ukraine, especially in Kyiv, the people accustomed to the stability. 
Yeah. Especially political. And then yeah, I know. It's, it's people in the East in general are very about stability. They just want yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We cannot understand what will be in Kiev. Mm -hmm. I'm frightened. Uh, I told to um, all my friends, to my colleagues, mm -hmm. when they phoned today, yesterday, today, and the day before yesterday about the Andrea, what is going on in the East Ukraine? I said, I know what is going on in the East Ukraine, but I don't know what will be in the key. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. So this is all a huge question mark, really. And and uh, yeah, it seems like there aren't really many good ways forward at the moment. Anyway. Uh, I want to thank you very much, Andre, for all those insightful comments here. I think it's going to be very, very educational for all our viewers and listeners. And and uh, I, I thank you very much for making the time and coming to our show. You know, despite these difficult situations, uh, that that you difficult circumstances that you're facing right now, I wish you all the best and your family in Donetsk and everywhere. And fingers crossed for preventing you know any war. We should be everybody should be against uh, any war really. But this is this is something you know uh, that we should all be spectacularly against because this could, this can break into something extremely dangerous uh you know including the uh, nuclear uh, i mean considering the uh, nuclear potential of of <laughs> ukraine of uh you know russia and 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 the united states and and like you know we don't really want to see the humanity end not right now at least you know uh Anyway, thank you. Thank you again. And uh, thank you to our uh, viewers and listeners. Please don't forget to go to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash the barricade and help us to the extent that you feel you can afford. You can make a monthly subscription there to uh, help us do what we do, which is independent journalism from Eastern Europe. Something rather unique, I got to tell you. And, uh, and, and once again, all the best. Ciao. Thank you. Bye.